And we are back with Cliff May, the president of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Cliff, I want to, I want to press the envelope a little bit right before the break. If I agree with everything you said, I think all our listeners agree with everything you said about the threat level, about the axis. I would call it the axis of evil. You can call it what you want, but it's it's Iran connected to Russia, connected to China. Got it. Then why not take out the nuclear capabilities of Iran now before they gain nuclear capabilities? So first of all, I would certainly favor that. Second, I would say that I would remind you that almost every president, Republican, Democrat and Democrat has said it is unac would be unacceptable for this regime in Iran to have nuclear weapons. The problem is too often when political leaders say something's unacceptable, that means they've already accepted it. I would hope that the next president would say other presidents have vowed to do this. I am actually going to get it done. I'm going to get the job done. The Americans could do it in a probably, a, and this is, I'm not a military expert, but I certainly can, I know military experts have months. Out. U.S. could probably get it done in, in a matter of days uh, based on the, the kinds of planes we have, the kinds of bombs we have, even without, we wouldn't have to use nuclear weapons to achieve it. We could get it done, but it's not easy um, because the, the the weapons factories, the, the, uh, the various components of all this mm -hmm. are dispersed and a lot of them are, not just hardened, they're under under mountains, really, really tough to get at. It's possible, but it's not easy. The Israelis can do it, but it would take probably weeks, not days for them to do it. And they probably can't do it on like a first strike and hitting the first day. Again, they don't want to bounce. They don't want to just bounce against the mountainside. So my guess would be that the Israelis say this is to come, but let's prepare the ground First, let's Understood. make sure when we go in there, they're not shooting at us. Let's figure out how to do it. Biden doesn't want them to do it now. It's before an election. It's two weeks. They'll probably say, OK, but let's move towards that. That goal has to be achieved. Again, the U.S. should achieve it because we just said we would, because death to America is also what the Islamic Republic of Iran's rulers say and vow and because they are in this cold war against us with our other adversaries like to see us do it it's not going to happen i think you know could 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 biden do it between in, in during while while a lame duck well it would be historic if he would but um i'm i'm going to give you i'm afraid you've got to be very good odds i'm going to bet with you on this <laughs> so i have a yeah. i have a quick question i'm sorry oh uh, erica you're you're there good to, i have good to, to hear in. from you eric you sound fine you sound, I have yeah, to she's, butt in. she she's sick of, of of listening to me anyway so hello, no erica. no this is just so fascinating and this is why i didn't want to miss the episode i just it's hard not to feel like this is all on purpose I mean, when you see various administration giving bags of cash to the Iranians and and all that, it's like we're we see you. We see you, bro. Like what? I it how it's double minded. We're on one side saying like, oh, no, it's very bad. Naughty, naughty, no nukes. But then we give them 12 billion dollars. It's more, it's one more, by the way, and I'm saying this, this is fact, this is not partisan. The Trump administration had maximum pressure, maybe is what they called it, that may be an exaggeration, but there was significant economic pressure on the Islamic Republic of Iran. They were probably down to, I don't know, $5 billion in foreign reserves by the end of the Trump administration. All of the, the sanctions were waived or lifted or not enforced. Probably two hundred billion dollars now, and you got to understand that these that Tehran sends Hezbollah maybe a hundred million dollars a year. The wow. rest of their money they get from drug smuggling and laundering, which they do in Latin America and the Middle East. So oh, we've you been mean, enriching. So our open them. border has consequences. Yeah, Sorry, that has Sorry, consequences. Sorry, There's Cliff. another story, but absolutely, you're absolutely right on that. Anyhow, so you're right. We've been spent now. What what is this? In part, it's a, it, it is the belief. Obama certainly had it. A lot of the Europeans had it. I had, I'm not going to have had dinner with a, an ambassador of a major European country last night. And we had a discussion about this. And I, where, you know, he talked about getting the Iranians back into negotiations. And my argument to him, and I, I can't say he wasn't, he was holding on, I said, they'll be glad to sit down and talk with you. And so what? They are not going to give you what you want. Diplomacy for the sake of diplomacy is useless. Just sitting down and negotiating. And by the way, if they if you got an agreement with them, you think they would honor it? 
What makes you think that? There's no reason. You think they're going to say, oh, you know what? We don't need nuclear weapons. What we really need is good trading relations with you. They've already got their cell <laughs> oil in China. No, we need. And by the way, what we really want Crazy. is we, we can have a good 401ks for our people. <laughs> Healthcare plan, you know, and I want to go for tuna, you know, for hummus in Tel Aviv next year. This is not going to happen. I don't care. I, you know, you're diplomats, so you think diplomacy is a solution, but diplomacy is a means, not an end. Mm. And it's not going to achieve anything with these people because they, they're, and if you understand who they are, they're not like you. I said to the ambassador, they're not like me. They want to conquer, they want to kill, they want to dominate. You don't. Wow. You're not, well, you don't want to send your army anywhere. You have no one of the other things about this axis I've talked about. Every mm -hmm. one of them has other lands they want to conquer. North Koreans want to conquer South Korea. Xi Jinping wants to conquer Taiwan and beyond. Putin wants to conquer Ukraine and beyond. Iran already has a virtual colony in Lebanon and in Syria and in Yemen. And he'll have it in Iraq pretty soon because we're not pushing back against him there. We're withdrawing Americans from there. And then he doesn't want to subjugate the Israelis. He wants to exterminate the Israelis. So it that's really the only is difference. like. But that's what it, that's part of it is this belief in a political settlement, a diplomatic solution, a deal, a win win outcome. This is an illusion. Yeah. You know, you know and, and I've argued, you know, Cliff, you make a, such a good point. I have argued that trying to reason, you know, Western rational or Western reasoning with the mullahs of Iran is, <laughs> is an oxymoron, right? Because they don't think in Western terms. They, they're religious zealots, and therefore it's impossible to reason with them in terms, sort of a Western civilized sense because their goals are so different. Right. Their goal is, like you just said, is not peace. And as far as talking to them, what I've said to people is appeasement didn't, as a foreign policy, did not work in 1938, you know, with, with Chamberlain, and it sure is not working now. Um, I want to segue to China, though, because the other argument, I, I want to move away from the Middle East, even though I think that's really, you know, the center of everything in terms of, of where um, the real the real threat to sort of uh, – peace in the Western hemisphere or ex existential threat, if really in terms of Western civilization. But to me, I, we, I've argued for a long time that China has been at war with America for, you know, hegemony, if you will, for, I don't know, 20 years. Uh, and we're not at war with them. And I want your perspective on sort of China's role in all of this. I mean, are they are they the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain? Is that really? I mean, what's their role in all of this, and what's really going on in China with Xi Jinping? Because again, segueing to the the next guest who's running for for Congress, Lily Tang Williams, she lived through the Cultural Revolution and under Mao, and then the loosening under you know Deng Xiaoping. But now with Xi Jinping, she says that you know they're sort of a um, you know, retrenching into sort of the old Maoist kind of values, but in a with more modern veneer. Uh, all that's what true. Say so, you? And I was recently in Taiwan, so I've been th thinking about this a lot and talking to a lot of people in Taiwan about this. Look, um, when, when FDD was founded in, just after the attacks of 2001, it, the world was actually simpler because at that point we thought, okay, we have jihadism. People didn't necessarily know that word, but we learned it quickly. Islamism, we have terrorism. There was a Sunni version. There was a Shia version, all of that. But if you think about it, what else happened in 2001? I'll tell you what happened. We brought a Ch uh, the People's Republic of China into the World Trade Organization. WTO. We gave we the WTO we gave them most favored nation uh, status there was a belief it was a theory i guess you might say maybe it's an experiment but both but republicans and democrats conservatives and liberals for the most part all agreed on this wow. we will help make them wealthier and if they get wealthier they will get more moderate they will see wow. that the world order that America leads is in their interest, and they'll become good stakeholders. We're <laughs> going to help them. And you know, Bill Clinton talked about this as a speech he made, and it's very persuasive where he says, I think this is the best bet. We're not going to push them out. We're going to bring them in. They're, we're going to make them friends. And for years, Americans went over to do business over there, made money. We could bring cheap clothes. You buy something at Walmart. It's probably made in China. Okay, that sounds great. A lot of things are still made in China. And when we became very interdependent with them economically, more so than we ever did with the Soviet Union, there is a debate among 
scholars and experts whether Xi Jinping was very different from his forebearers, for Xi Jinping, say, um, whether he was more ambitious or whether they were just biding their time till they got strong enough to begin to challenge the U.S. Right now, the, the Navy that China has is bigger than the U.S. Navy. Bigger. That's right. And wow. it's getting bigger every day, and ours is getting smaller. Our military is about half the strength it was in 1990 when we fought briefly in Iraq. We, uh, If this is a Cold War, it's a much more challenging Cold War than the one that was just against the Soviet Union and its satellites. But we, are, as a percentage of GDP, we're not spending anything like what we were spending then. We are not pre prepping for this. What China wants, is a, Xi Jinping wants to conquer Taiwan, then conquer and intimidate the rest of Asia and into me. J Japanese you have to understand you take orders from us, the Philippines, they're already pressuring them, the Vietnamese, the Australians, and again, eventually displace the U.S. as the preeminent power in the world and replace what we call, and I know it's, it's mind-boggling and your eyes roll, the liberal international American-led rules-based order with an order based in Beijing with the rules made in Beijing. And yes, they'll give their partners some latitude, at least for a while, Tehran, Moscow, Venezuela, North Korea. But eventually they want to be, Xi Jinping wants China to rule the world and the America to be diminished at the very least. So, so if, if I, if you don't mind me pressing the question, is China at war with us? Yes, it's a cold I, war. It's a cold, it's war. a cold war. No, I agree. I, I agree. Cold, and it, so, and it, and it, but it may get hot. Don't forget, President Biden has four times said, and his then his people, his, his advisors, walk him back, has said four times, "I would defend uh, Taiwan." Defending Taiwan won't be easy, and if they continue to to become more militarily powerful and we become less. That, then it won't work at all. The only way you deter Xi Jinping is when he gets up in the morning and says, is this the day I conquer Taiwan? He says, I don't know. I don't know. The Americans look pretty tough, and I don't want to be humiliated. So maybe I'll think about it tomorrow instead. Wow. And, and, and yet I, I have friends, not not as highly placed as you perhaps, but, but highly placed in the military, and I know of the, of the you know, war games and the um, – mm the computer models that they've run on these things where, where, and don't quote me on it, but I think we lose in like, you know, you know, I don't know if it was 81 seconds or 81 hours, but it was a really short order where the, where the computer generated games and, and that they were, that they were simulating, you know, the point showed is that you're absolutely, yes, the war games have been run. Look, the point is, and this should be true of all our adversaries. It should never be in doubt. You don't deterrence means that your enemies, your adversaries are convinced you have the capabilities to beat them and beat them bad and the will to utilize those capabilities. You do not want a balance of power. You want an imbalance of power. If you have, there's an imbalance of power, nobody challenges you because they know it's a bad deal. Okay. Okay. I'm having, I'm having an aneurysm right now. I can't even. <laughs> so, it's just a cold now. I go, out. Oh my, I'm just yep. like, I'm From so mad. I'm sitting here just fuming, getting madder and madder. So what I just heard you say is that China is at war with us and our government thinks that it's a good idea for us to continue ha being dependent on them for, medicine and PPE and continue letting them buy our bonds so we're indebted to them and all like I I oh uh, why uh, uh, Cliff uh, let me introduce you to Erica who's the emotional side of us as a couple on, on, on <laughs> oh, <yeah>. radio. <laughs> I mean this is like I I mean yo like this is just more evidence that our government sucks you, there, you look, if you want to have reasonable foreign policy, national security policy, the first thing you have to do is recognize reality and then think of mm. the ways in which you want to deal with that reality. Now, we are it is not it, you, you can't just cut off China tomorrow. The Soviet Union, again, was easier. We we're what we we're mm. buying a little vodka, maybe mm, <laughs> some chinchilla hats. It's not a whole lot. Caviar. Uh, here it's Caviar. tough. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be different. Matt Pop. 
Matt Pottinger is a brilliant guy who I won't give you his whole background, but he's a but he was the National Security Council as um, as a deputy uh, national security advisor. He's a China expert, speaks Mandarin. He said, "Look, with Russia, with the Soviet Union, was containment here. It's constrainment. That's the, that should be the policy for now. Wow. We're not going to disengage economically entirely, but we need to begin to." We can't have any strategic um, lines of what am I trying to say? Uh, we, we have anything that's strategic, medicine, weapons. Yeah. We have to be very cautious of. Don't let them in, have control over our ports. I mean, we got to you know we, we have to look carefully at what where the most threats are, and there are a lot of them. So, for example, TikTok is a big threat, and we yeah. can't let that continue. It's an inf- they're using an information war. You got to be very careful that they're not getting in all your cars and all your batteries, mm-hmm. and they're not on military bases, and they're not. There's a lot and of the things you need to do. You're not going to do everything. Thing. scandal it's like, not just a pacing challenge which is what the Biden administration likes to call it it's mm. much it's much more serious than that um your your supply chains that's what i was saying you got to be careful in your supply chains what's coming in what can they put in it what the israelis did with the beepers you know with the pagers yeah we should look at that carefully because you think the chinese are not saying wow how clever how did they do that what can we put oh, in, a, in, a, no. in, in things that we would and again it doesn't have to explode it can just it, you know Be what if all the eight steals went out say, if you were the chinese if you said if we're going to go into say taiwan what if every atm went out in america on that day what if <laughs> What if they had no communications to the Americans? What if they couldn't communicate among themselves? What if, again, cyber warfare is a huge thing. We have a whole cyber center at FDD looking at these right. things, looking at how the Chinese can get in the supply chains, even for our weapons and wow. munitions. It's all very dangerous. We are in a real serious threat environment, and I would like both our candidates for president to recognize that. I understand that's not what most people are voting on, but hopefully when, I, when I'm on a program like yours, listeners realize, oh, this is a serious issue after all. Yeah. Speaking so, so, you know, of, speaking me, of that, me, yep. uh, yeah, speaking of that, we are about to hear from a uh, congressional candidate who will have some say in how we deal with China. And uh, so, uh, Cliff, thank you so much. Cliff May, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, we are definitely going to have to have you back because this was... Excuse me. I don't know if you can see this, but I have a list of questions for you, Cliff, that I didn't get to. Yeah. So I, I, I think, you know, sooner rather than later, um, you know, we definitely need to have you back because when I knew you were coming on, so I want to ask him about this and this and this and this and this and this. So there was a lot yeah. of questions. I didn't get well, to. But, and I think thank a you great time will be after the election when we can talk a little bit more about specifically what we think policies will look like going forward. And again, hopefully we'll have a new congressional uh, representative in New Hampshire. So, all right. Great thank you again. You. Great to visit with you. Take care. Thank I'll you, see Cliff. you again soon. Bye. Cliff, thanks for making the time.